Thomas Neal Cream was a doctor, among other things. Those other things include being a serial killer, a legal abortionist, arsonist, blackmailer, thief, and rapist. Thomas was raised in Quebec City. Later on, he attended and graduated McGill University, getting his Doctor of Medicine degree in 1876. Supposedly, his thesis topic was chloroform. <coughs> Foreshadowing. <clears throat> Afterward, he got postgraduate training. And for the cherry on top, he got extra qualifications, whatever those are. He then later returned to practice in London, Ontario. Now, with all these qualifications, you'd imagine he'd pick up all kinds of women. And he did. He married Flora Brooks, a woman whom he impregnated and nearly killed while aborting said child. And thus, his career began. After the death of his wife, Tommy's good looks got him into even more hot water. Kate Gardner, a woman who he had an affair with, was found dead in an alleyway behind Cream's office. She was impregnated and poisoned by chloroform, believe it or not. Thomas claimed it wasn't him, but the claims got to him and he moved to the United States. After arriving in Chicago, Thomas was back to his usual antics. Thomas started an illegal abortion clinic for prostitutes. In August of 1880, Cream was investigated due to him killing Mary Ann Faulkner during abortion. As per usual, he wasn't arrested due to lack of evidence. Cream killed another named Miss Stack in December of 1880. She died shortly after Cream operated on her. Thusly, ya boy Thomas blackmailed her pharmacist. In 1881, Thomas murdered Alice Montgomery. She died of strychnine poisoning after an abortion in a building roughly a block from Thomas's office. The case was declared a murder. However, it was never solved. Finally, justice caught up to Dr. Cream. In July of 1881, similarly to the previous murder, Daniel Stott died of strychnine poisoning. You may be saying, wait, wait, wait. Vacant. Thomas treated a male? However, at this time, it was because Thomas supplied him with an epilepsy medicine. The death was actually due to natural causes, but Thomas struck again and accused the pharmacist of killing Daniel. Cream was arrested, along with his wife. She pled guilty and avoided prison. After doing so, Cream was arrested for murder. He had to serve a life sentence. But alas, no one can stop the Creamer, and his sentence was lifted after his brother pled to let Thomas go, and allegedly bribed the authorities. Cream used money inherited from his father to head to England. After arriving in Liverpool, he moved to Lambeth Palace Road in London. Side note, funnily enough, Lambeth Palace Road has a St. Thomas Hospital nearby. Anyways, at his time of arrival, Lambeth was ridden with poverty, crime, and more importantly, prostitution. Speaking of prostitutes, one named Ellen Donworth accepted a drink from Cream. She fell severely ill and died later due to, as per usual, strychnine poisoning. He tried blackmailing more people. This next murder will be important later. On October 20th, 1891, Thomas met with a prostitute named Matilda Clover. Suddenly, she got ill and died. Suspicious? Nah. Her death was thought to be caused by alcoholism. However, Thomas thought otherwise and sent a letter to Dr. William Broadbent, accusing him of the murder of Matilda. William then sent the letter to the Metropolitan Police Service. Thomas later killed two more women before the law had caught up to him once again. Thomas's many letters had succeeded in attracting a lot of attention to him. Those letters turned out to be the downfall of the doctor. The police noticed something about his most recent one. He referred to Matilda's death as a murder. Everyone thought that it had been of natural causes, or aforementioned alcoholism. Suspicious? Yes. After Thomas did even more suspicious things, he was put under a watch list. Eventually, the London police found out about Thomas's criminal record in the USA. Murder by poison. They put two and two together, and so, he was taken to court. While there, they read a letter from Jack the Ripper himself, declaring Thomas innocent. This caused laughter throughout the room, including from Thomas himself. Later, they declared Thomas guilty for the murders of, but not limited to, Clover, Donworth, Marsh, and Shrevel. He was also found guilty of extortion. The trial lasted from the 17th to the 21st of October. The deliberation lasted 12 minutes. He was sentenced to death. Less than a month after his conviction, Thomas was hanged on the gallows at Newgate Prison. His alleged last words were, I am Jack the... 
Was he actually Jack the Ripper, or was this another case of some Randy claiming to be him? Likely the second option, as Thomas was A, in prison at the time of the murders, and B, in a different continent. However, one funnier thought is that while hanging, he lost control of his bodily functions and said, I am ejaculating, which could be mistaken as, I am Jack the... Which would make sense, as strangulation does cause erections, so it's for you to decide, really. Yeah, so uh, he also doesn't appear in McGill graduate directories, so yeah. Uh, there are a few minor things, for Thomas at least, that I didn't bring up. Um, but anyways, uh, I think it's fair to say that Thomas was just a bad person and his mother should have had an illegal abortion.